Howell uh, was still um, getting better. Game game time decision tomorrow. Uh, Brad felt great. Still doing all the treatments and all the things that he has to do to be ready. Um, I'm sure we we'll know more about how you know to later on today and, and then tomorrow. But Brad's Brad's feeling feeling good. And the um, Celtics have been pretty generous on defense and allowing points at the rim, especially lately. Um, obviously, that's it works out pretty well for you guys. And we're talking to Daniel later. But um, how much of a good defensive matchup is that for you guys, especially after what we saw last game with Ish and Russ being able to work really well um, kind of in that arena? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, Ava, That's how we, we have to play. We have to be able to attack the rim. We got guys that can get to the paint and we got some shooters that can uh, space out the floor, but our, 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 our penetrating guards are dynamic and we want them to get to the bucket and create opportunities to get to the free throw line or get some early fouls so we can get into the bonus because we, we need to get to the free throws. Uh, we need free throw attempts, but Ish, Russell, Brad, those guys can, uh, how can get to the, get to the paint, but we need that. I mean, I know, this team that has a, a couple of really good shot blockers that we have to be aware of, but we are definitely, uh, we're, we're at our best when we're attacking the paint and not selling for jump shots. Leonardo. Hi coach, it's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, what does this playing mean to you as a coach? I think it's, it's a great, it's great for all of us. It's great for the league, great for the basketball world. It creates a lot of excitement and it gives a lot of teams uh, uh, reasons uh, to compete, you know, to get in, involved in the play in game. And, and look what it the created, look all the excitement it's creating now. Some of these early play in matchups are pretty, uh, there's a lot of intrigue. So we're playing against a really good team. And, but I'm, I'm excited that we fought our way back to be in this position and give our credit uh, where it's due with our players, never giving up or giving in and just fighting together for, you know, hopefully we can keep, you know, keep playing well and, and, and keep moving forward. And just a quick one in terms of overall, what are your thoughts on Russell Westbrook's season? Um, remarkable but it's nothing that I never seen before. And it's not something I'm surprised at. It's just, uh, he's just, uh, he's as unique as any player in this game's history. And the thing that I, there's many things I love about him, but his leadership has been just on point. Uh, he, he pushes our young guys enough and loves them enough, but he has a pretty good balance. He, he's, he's able to find that sweet spot. And, but his play has just been incredible. Um, but yeah, he's, he's like I've said before, he's going to go down as one of the all time greats. Neil. Scott, I wanted to pick your brain about the timeouts and stuff in the fourth quarter. It looked like seven minutes left, you had taken a timeout and maybe thought about challenging something. Robin was kind of saying, no, don't challenge it. Then a minute later, Brad had the verticality with Cody Zeller. If you had that third timeout that you had taken earlier, would you have maybe considered challenging that one? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always, there's always plays throughout the game you would consider challenging, but you got to also the 50-50 ones are tough to, to challenge because there's there's a lot of contact on a lot of plays throughout the game, and and you can you can argue that that every one's a foul. The referees do a good job of you know understanding incidental contact or uh, knock your you know your balance off contact type of um, foul. So. Those are always tough decisions. Everybody has them. I've watched many games and you call it early and then you don't have it late. 
And if you have it late and then you only have one timeout, then you're risking a last second play that you might have to throw it from baseline to, the, to baseline. So I trust our guys. I, I was going to like my, my in-game vision of that play was, okay, did, did, did um, LaMelo gather on his and one? I thought he did not. So I, was, I stalled as much as I can, like everybody does. And I listened to our players and, and, and coaching staff, and I didn't challenge it. Chase. Hey, Scott. Um, you played the Celtics uh, three times this year, but the last time was in, in February. And that game uh, kind of came down to Jason Tatum getting to the rim. But since you've added Daniel Gafford, they haven't played you with Daniel Gafford. Um, what type of difference do you think he can make in this matchup between these teams? Well, he's been great since the pickup. That was a great pickup for us. He he puts a lot of pressure on the rim. His roles are dynamic. We got uh, playmaking guards that can create a lot of difficult positions that the defense has to be in. And he's able, and he's been able to pretty good shot blocker since we picked him up. So. We have a lot of respect for Boston, how they play. They got some really good players. Um, but Gaff is a big part of what we do, and I'm looking forward to continue to develop his game. And you kind of alluded to this um, maybe a couple weeks ago about Brad and kind of, um, you know, getting to this point the last few years, what it's been like for him. Um, what kind of sense do you get, and maybe for yourself too, just, you know, you guys went through a lot these last two years to get back to the postseason. Um, what, what's the feeling getting back after going through uh, some, taking your lumps, I guess you could say. Yeah, I, like I said the other, yesterday or the day before, he doesn't get enough credit of what he's had to go through uh, with all the injuries we've had the last three years. And trust me, he doesn't like getting triple teamed and, and things like that, but he had to go through that because of what we, we were playing with and the, the, the transition that we pivot there, our team with, you know, playing, playing the, a lot of the younger players and giving, giving guys opportunities, but he's handled it like I knew he would. And, you know, now that we're, we're, we're playing much better, our younger guys are improving and added some valuable pieces, but he's a winning basketball player that he's about team and, you know, like yesterday was another classic example of what he's what he's about and how he's going to continue to help us build the program forward. Last question to Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, historically, Brad spends uh, put a lot of time on on Tatum, and you've had Rui guard uh, big wings like like Tatum as as well. How how important is is Brad's mobility in terms of what you guys want to do? guarding a player that good? Well, J Jason's uh, obviously a, a well-rounded player. He's an all-star for a reason. There's not a lot of them in the league. Uh, we're going to have multiple players guard him, but like all the great players, you need a lot of eyeballs on, on, on those players. Like they're going to have the same uh, situation uh, trying to guard Brad with the, the players that they want to put on him. Uh, so, Everybody's going to get get a crack at him, and like I said, it's going to take a total team effort to stop uh, Jason and, and their and their better players. You looked like from from watching from afar, you were grimacing a lot in that game. You were you were limping. You were touching the hamstring. How healthy would you say that you were in that game? And what was that experience like fighting through that injury to to play? Uh... I don't know what percentage, obviously not a hundred. I mean, we all know that. Um, I can't really put a percentage on it. Uh, I know there's a lot of limitations to things that I can and can't do, um, but you know, it, it becomes a mind over matter thing. And obviously it loosens up throughout the game and you're just trying to control what you can and try not to, you know, overextend your body or put yourself in you know, unfortunate situations. So uh, obviously early on was going to be tough. I knew that. I mean, I haven't played in a week. Um, I haven't, done anything I haven't seen five on five in a minute so I knew that was just going to be an adjustment and just trying to more or less try to figure out what I can and can't do and uh you know kind of go from there first half first quarter was definitely definitely rough uh but more than anything just staying with it and staying confident 
eventually, you know, uh, the game will open up, which it did. What what allowed you? You seem to be at least moving better in the second half. What what allowed you to kind of get that that burst in the second half? Uh well, in the first quarter, I think we taped. We had my my hemi taped, um, and it was like tugging a little bit too too much on on that area, and so I took it off. And actually, when I took it off, I felt a little bit better. I played with a, a compression sleeve on as well too. So, um, you know, it all it felt better once I took the tape off. Uh, obviously didn't feel back to 100, but I was able to move a little bit more uh, smoother than, than what I was. So uh, once I was able to do that, you know, I was able to figure out, okay, what I could and couldn't do, uh, find some ways to attack, get my shot off, and uh, second half was different. Yeah. Scott? Brad, it's always good to see you. Uh, obviously, uh... This franchise had plenty has had plenty of history with Boston in, in playoff type situations, and and here we go again uh, against Boston and basically in a playoff game. Exciting your approach to this game. Uh, I guess your personal feelings toward uh, facing Boston in a big game again. Uh, it's always fun. We know that this is a competitive organization. Uh, you know they're always you know they're they're competing for a championship every year. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to it. Obviously, this isn't the same. Neither team is the same as it was a couple of years ago. I think I'm probably the last troop still here from that team. And uh, I can tell you who's still remaining from their team. Maybe Marcus Smart. That's probably the only guy left. So uh, more than anything, man, we're just competing. We know we've had some tough battles earlier this year. And then obviously a few years ago, uh, we know how they went down. But it's definitely amazing to be back in that position to where we're fighting for Something else in the playoffs. We're both fighting for, you know, high position. Uh, you know, so I'm definitely excited about it, playing against my brother again. And, uh, everything's on the line. So. You know, this team clearly has the momentum, the confidence. Uh, you guys got to be feeling good right now. You know, I don't. I hate making comparisons to past years and whatnot, but uh, overall body of work, you guys got to be feeling awfully confident in, in the momentum, as I mentioned, uh, going into however long you can make this run for. Most definitely, you know, we're, it's, it's crazy. You know, we can't really point to what started it or, you know, how we ended up, you know, going on this this nice little run, but it clicked at the right time. You know, obviously we're healthy, which is something I always say, as long as we have all of our guys, we love what we're capable of doing. Uh, it's just a matter of us staying that way, staying healthy and, and just being available for our team. Uh, and man, I don't, I don't really know. Like we're really just, Meshing well, we're playing well, everything is clicking. Uh, I laughed and said we're actually starting to defend. We actually made a decision to defend a little bit. So, uh, you know, whenever, you know, we're putting our minds to, you know, what's been working, we didn't change it. You know, we stuck with that. It took it a day at a time, which I think we've credited to. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Chase. Hey, Brad. Um, the trajectory of your career has been uh, to where you know, at one point you were very accustomed to going to the playoffs, actually winning series. And then of course, uh, it was a couple of years where you had to take your lumps and you know, now you're back. I'm just wondering how rewarding is it to be back in the postseason, And, and I guess how fun has it been to like, find, to these last few weeks to be winning for the first time in, in, in years, essentially. It's been amazing. And it's all I've been caring about and all I've been focusing on. Uh, like you said, I haven't been in the playoffs in like two, three years. And so that's, that's unlike us, you know, we, we're usually there, we're usually fighting, competing, and, you know, in the mix. So, like you said, I definitely took some bumps and some lumps on the way and uh, it definitely helped mature my game and, you know, prepare me for this situation. But I'm definitely excited we're back to where we belong. You know, we're a playoff type team. Uh, and so I'm happy we gave ourselves an opportunity, uh, you know, to finish off the year where we did. We finished at eight, which the year was regular, we'd still be in the playoffs. So that's amazing to hear. And um, you mentioned it, your brother, Jason Tatum, mm -hmm. <laughs> up against him in a, in a, a very important game. Uh, what What's that going to be like? What are these next, uh, you know, I guess 30-something hours going to be like uh, between you guys? Oh, I mean, it's, it's the same as it always is. Like, we're, we're very competitive. Um, you know, that's, that's my brother at the end of the day. We love each other to death off the floor. When we step in between the lines, we're, you know, he plays for Boston, I play for Washington. You know, we're, we're still brothers, but we compete. We both want to win. Uh, we're both playing at, at high levels right now. And uh, it's just, it's always fun. You know, I'm, I'm always his biggest fan and just watching him grow in the league and uh, just to see his strides and to see where he's going. 
Um, but I'm definitely, you know, definitely excited about my team and where we are and, and the possibilities and chances we have in beating them and move forward. Matt Paris. Hey, Brad. In a, like a one game scenario, just what is having like, like you and Russ do for raising the ceiling of, you know, anything could, you know, go this time of year, but having the caliber of players that, you know, you and Elon Russ are? Uh, I mean, it, it breeds confidence. You know, it just trickles down to everybody. It gives everybody a sense of, uh, I guess, security in a way. And, uh, Positivity, like I was asking myself the whole last 48 hours of whether or not I was going to play yesterday. It's uh, it's tough because at the end of the day, it's not all about me. Uh, you know, it's about my teammates helping them out, giving them, you know, a sense of confidence and belief that, you know, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be and I'm going to help in any way I can. And it took a while for me to realize, you know, how important that part of the game is, you know, being available for your team. Uh, being there, encouragement and all of that, great body language, like all of that plays a factor into being a good leader. Um, and so I've, I've definitely learned that along the way through this year. And uh, yesterday was a, a testament to that, you know, just being available for my team, regardless if I was 100% or not, you know, just understanding how impactful you still could be. And did everything come out okay with the hamstring? Any, like, would you be good to go for two? Yeah, there was no step back, which is... It was good. I didn't, I didn't injure it any worse than, than what it was, so that's positive. Uh, obviously, it still probably won't be 100%. It's just a matter of managing it and uh, playing as best I can. Ava? Brad, I kind of wanted to ask you to elaborate a little bit on what you were just talking about, just in the whole picture of leadership thing. I think, I think you talked about this um, when you were on the jump in regards to Russ. And I'm just wondering what you've learned from him this year as it relates to being like a franchise guy and being that type of face of uh, a team, if you've learned anything at all from him. Uh, the biggest thing is, is his mental approach to the game and to his teammates. You know, he's always, he always wants to win, you know, and it may come off as nasty and ugly sometimes, but, you know, that's, that's him. You know, he wants to win. Everything is going to be perfect. Everything is going to be beautiful. Uh, but, you know, he, he doesn't demand something out of anybody else that he doesn't do out of, you know, demand out of himself, you know, or expect out of himself. Uh, and I respect that, you know, each and every night he comes out with the mentality that he's the best player on the floor and that he's going to be the best playmaker on the floor. And, and he goes out and does that, you know, and for him to do that night in and night out on a consistent basis, uh, it propelled me and propelled my game because, you know, I've seen times where he's, he's hurt. I know he probably shouldn't even be playing. Uh, but he's out here, he's, he's competing, he's going hard, and he's still getting triple doubles. He's still, you know, leading. He's still talking to his teammates, you know. So it's it's, it's very motivational in a lot of ways, you know, for to see, you know, a man be able to just channel that type of energy night in and night out. And it's just all about mental toughness. You know, his, his mental confidence and where he is in his game and in his life is, you know, nobody can hinder it. Nobody can touch it, you know, and I think that's – that's something I'm, I'm trying to grasp to my own. And then the the win you guys had against Boston um, in, on Valentine's Day was kind of one of the high points for you guys. It started off like that first really big stretch. Do you go back to that game and say, okay, here's what we can replicate from that situation or not at all because your roster was pretty different at that point? Uh, yes, I know. Like, I, I, I can't. Like, our roster is, like you said, has been so up and down this year. We've had a lot of guys who, been hurt, we've had it, you know, guys from G back and forth between their assignments and 10 day guys. So it's like our team hasn't been the fully outlook of it hasn't been the same the whole year. So I won't I won't necessarily say that. And I think the last time we played them was a one o'clock game. And I don't think everybody's ever ready for a one o'clock game. So, you know, we'll definitely we know there'll be a different team tomorrow. We're a different team. Uh definitely, especially after the trade, trade deadline. So uh, I'm definitely excited and curious to see how everything goes tomorrow. Thanks, Brad. Last question to Neil. Hey, Brad, uh, you are correct. You and Marcus Smart are the only remaining members from 2016 17. <laughs> it's me versus Marcus tomorrow. Yeah. Um, for your, your hamstring, can you kind of take us through how you come to the process of, okay, yes, I am going to play for the Hornets game versus, you know, you did, obviously didn't play for the Hawks and Cavs. And obviously, you know, I'm sure you're progressing 
Um, and does the, does the training staff ever tell you something like, well, you can play um, and, you know, most likely, you know, you won't re-aggravate it, you won't make it worse. Cause I think, you know, that's always a concern yeah. uh, with hamstrings. Yeah. Uh, so I get, I definitely get my, my feedback from our, from our team docs, uh, our trainers and everything first. Uh, the biggest thing for them is they say, I know my body better than anybody and I'll tell them the same thing. So it ultimately comes down to me making the decision. It's never easy. Um, it's never easy, honestly. Uh, because for me, I didn't want it to, I didn't want my first game back to be the playing game, which is, you know, knock on wood, if we lost yesterday, you know, every, all the marbles are on Tuesday, you know, so I didn't, I didn't necessarily want that. I at least want to give myself a chance and see how I felt, even if that meant, you know, I might've sent myself back, even if that meant not being able to play on Tuesday, you know, so I understood how important this game was. Uh, just in terms of a positioning standpoint, you know, giving ourselves a chance to play one game versus two potentially. Uh, and just all of that stuff factored into it, you know, uh, which is why I said it, it, it ultimately became about my teammates and helping them and less about me. A hundred percent, it's always, you know, as a player, you want to be selfish and um, take care of your body and look out for yourself. And, and I do that, but, you know, I'm also hard headed in a lot of ways too. And, you know, I love, I love the play and I love being out there with my teammates. And yesterday, I kind of made a hard-headed decision to play probably when I shouldn't have, but, you know, we made the best of it. And honestly, it's going to be something that, you know, you're going to have to deal with, you know, whether it's today or whether it's Tuesday. And so I just was like, okay, I'll just deal with it today and see how it goes. So it's pretty much how I came down to it. I mean, the medical staff was, they weren't a hundred percent with it. Uh, some guys were, some weren't, but, you know, I think that's what I respect and love about our group. You know, I get, I get that, uh, I get a good mix of both. I get devil's advocate, you know, on either side. So, uh, you know, I definitely credit our, our, our staff, you know, for the diligent work that they did and for the information that they share with me uh, and, and giving me some confidence to be able to go on the floor, for sure. And Scott said that you were feeling good, feeling great. Um, how would you say, is it just regular soreness that you would expect? Is it feeling as good day after as you could hope it was? I feel good. I would say I'm not as sore as I thought I would be. I'm not um, as beat up as I thought. Like I feel feel pretty good. Still a little bit sore, uh, but obviously treatment will be my friend in the next 24 hours. Daniel, just wanted to get your kind of thoughts in general on the matchup. What do you feel like you guys uh, need to do, especially on defense against this team? Um. Really just, you know, make guys uncomfortable as much as we possibly can. You know, make them take shots that, you know, that'll help us succeed in the long run. Make them take shots and they're not really used to taking and just having them get down here and just finish over our um, link, really. And just making sure on the defensive end that, you know, we're physical and we got we got to keep guys off the glass on the offensive glass um, on the other end of the floor because if we can control the boards and if we can control, you know, shots that they take, It'll be a good game for us, in my opinion. Yeah, kind of on, on that note, what's your mindset like as kind of someone who's a little bit younger going into a high pressure situation, not quite the playoffs, but almost the playoffs? Have the vets kind of been talking to you guys about that at all? Or is it is it the kind of thing where you don't want to talk about it that much? Um, I don't know if it's something that they want to talk about. I don't know. But um, it, I haven't really, you know, been hearing anybody like talk about it. They might do it, you know, somewhere where I'm not around or anything like that. But um, just really just the mindset is just, you know, just coming in and just taking care of business. Because, I mean, if, you know, we prosper and whatnot in this first game, then, I mean, it's the sky's the limit for us at this point, you know. DA. Hey, Gaff. I'm just wondering, coming from a, a rebuild situation to this where this team – really since you've been here has sort of taken off just what it feels like when you're when you're playing for something that's down the road as opposed to playing for a playoff spot right now what the different mindsets are I mean really like I said just the mindset is just you know take it's really just taking one game at a time I mean if we focus on anything that's beyond this point you know it's going pretty sure it's going to cloud our thinking can be focused on you know who we got next and who we got in the long run, we just have to be focused on this next game that we have in hand. Just taking one game at a time, and we should be okay. And what what have Brad and Russ done in terms of helping you kind of make the adjustment to coming here and, you know, just kind of 
showing you what what this team has been about and what this team wants to be about? Um, really just treat me like I got drafted here. That's the main thing, you know, just kind of like building that chemistry with those guys and kind of, I would say, somewhat building like a brotherhood with those two and just everybody else on the team. You know, it's just like one big happy family. Like I'm, I'm always saying it. it's kind of like one big happy family for me just being in this situation. And when I got traded here, um, you know, I've been, I've felt welcomed here ever since I got here. And from that point on, you know, I've just been working to just be more and more accumulated to the team and like the staff and everything. Because I mean, I like it here. And I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good run for us for sure. Thank you. Scott. Hey Gaff, um, you know, you guys have basically played a playoff game every game for, for quite a while now. So I'm wondering what kind of toll has that taken mentally, physically on the team? How much do you have left in the tank? Because for a good month, every game has been so important. Um, mentally, um, I really can't speak for anybody, but I mean, you know, just like I had said with the um, game is coming up, we just had to take it one game at a time. You know, we wanted to be in this position, so we worked our, we worked our butts off to get in this position. And that's one thing that we all came together and we locked in and we made sure we did, you know, from the guys that were starting, from the guys that were coming off the bench, came in and did what we had to do, whether, you know, it was a rough night and it was an ugly win or if it was a good night if it was a pretty win. You know, we just came out and we took care of business. And what's it say about the character and kind of the makeup of this team to – to treat every game like a playoff game. And obviously you guys are getting rewarded now. Um, really just shows that if we lock in and just really just put our minds to it, it can take us a long way. So really just being able to just come together as a team, just lock in and always, and like making the goal of what we want and attacking that goal. And it can, it can really just take us as far as we want to go. Thank you. Chase. Hey, Daniel. Um, Bradley Beals kind of waited a, a while to get back to this point in the postseason. And when you arrived on this team, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily a high point. And then you guys have gone on this run. How have you seen his mood change in the last few weeks? Or, or have you seen it change? What have your impressions been of, of Bradley Beal and just how he's enjoyed this? Uh, I mean, I could just tell he's enjoying it because, I mean, everybody wants to play in the postseason, you know. <laughs> I think um, after we had lost that second game, this is about Russ, we had lost the second game in Atlanta. And he was just talking about how, like, you know, I didn't make plans to go on a vacation or anything after the season because he wanted to play in the postseason. And Brad was, like, agreeing because of just, like, simple fact that he wanted to do the same thing. And I'm just thinking in my mind, like, yeah, hey, you know, kind of that sometimes is, you know, the mentality of some people because, you know, they're in this position, you know, they're losing games. They're in a position they might not be in the play-in or maybe even in the playoffs. And just seeing that those guys have that mentality really just like stood out to me because of how much they really love the game and how much they really want to play for more throughout their careers or things like that. So it really just stood out to me, kind of helped me build my mentality to where, you know, um, where I wanted to play more and more just like in the postseason and stuff. Because I've been in a position to where, you know, like, yeah, I'm just here. It's another game. You know, don't go home, <laughs> play my game, be around my um, be around my dogs and everything that's in my house, certain things like that. But now, you know, I'm like further in the position now since I'm around two, you know, um, vet guys that they want to play in the postseason and stuff. And it's really just showing me how much guys really want to, you know, play after the season and just seeing how Brad, you know, he comes in every day, especially with like the um, hamstring things he's dealing with just seeing like the things that he does to really just work to get back to it and just seeing how to, how much frustration it was when he had actually hurt his hamstring. It was just, it was just a real big thing for me because of how much he wants it. Last question to Neil. Hey Daniel, uh, obviously you guys have had practices very few and in between um, with guys limited and things like that. What were you guys able to accomplish today? Was it mostly film stuff? Were you guys able to go through anything on the court and things like that? Um, it was mostly it was mostly film and just like optional shooting, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, um, yeah, I, we just sat down, watched film together, went through like, you know, the personnel and stuff for Boston. And if guys wanted to get shots up, we did. And I always come in and get shots up. If not, I just get free throws up. But that's just my man. But that, that's what today was. <laughs> and, you know, obviously still you've only been here for two months now. Um, where would you say is your uh, chemistry fit and everything like that? Is it still, you know, increasing day by day? Or would you say that, you know, you're fully into it now? 
I say increasing day by day. I wouldn't say I'm fully into it just yet. I'm for sure it's a lot of things that I'm um, still learning, certain things like that, especially with some of the guys on the team and whatnot. But it's increasing day by day. I, mean, I love this squad, you know, and, you know, I've loved it ever since I got here. And, like, day by day, you know, they, if I've always learned new things or I've always seen new things and, you know, the friendships and relationships between all the guys on the team, it, get better, it gets better and better day in and day out. So the chemistry is getting like, you know, it's, it's almost at 100%, but it's not quite there yet.